Welcome to section six, the final section of Science of the Pole Shift, the end game. So I wrote this presentation in 2017, and at the end I put some predictions for the coming years. Uh, let's see how I did. If our 20-year timeline is accurate, we should see the pole shift occur sometime in 2023. So what can we expect until then? And this was my thing for 2018. Extreme weather, all this stuff happened pretty much. New Madrid earthquakes, crop failures, economic unheaval, upheaval, political upheaval, social unrest. We saw big moves in Ukraine, Venezuela, Turkey, the Philippines, Catalonia, Saudi Arabia. And at home in the U.S., there seems to be a new reason for social unrest every few weeks, doesn't there? <clears throat> I wrote that in 2018. And it still applies today in 2020 when I'm recording this. 2019 to 2021, I said, same but worse. Yeah, pretty much. Expect more of the same but worse. More earthquakes, blending of the seasons, where the weather is concerned, more collapse, more upheaval. There might be a month here or there where things seem calm, but the craziness will start up again shortly thereafter. You see, the social unrest goes hand in hand with the uh, environmental unrest that's happening to the Earth right now due to the presence of Nibiru in our solar system. And um, I'm sitting here towards the end of 2020, and you know, there's a lot of political strife in the United States. I think that's safe to say there's there's been a lot of riots and different political machinations by the different sides, and things going on in other countries too. And guys, it's not it's not going to go back to normal. You know, the calm and normal and relative quiet that we knew in the 2010s and the 2000s. We're not going to see that again. I don't. I don't mean to be a gloom and doomer. You know, you don't have to let it get to you. But just understand that attitudes are shifting, institutions are failing, our, our world is changing. Literally, it's 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 the globe itself is going to be changing with the pole shift, and that trickles down all the way to human society. So let's finish up this slide. 2022 to 2023, um, Nibiru should become visible during the day and we'll see that fuzzy red globe with wings in the sky. When this happens, the elites who know all about Nibiru, they will go into hiding. They will load up their private jets and fly off to New Zealand and South Africa and Switzerland and where, wherever they will get in their yachts and they'll, they'll motor over to uh, Australia, where, wherever it is that they're, they're headed. And the common folk, like, like myself, <laughs> we will be left to our own devices largely. And then shortly afterwards, Pole shift! So congratulations, you made it to the end of this presentation. One of the few uh, YouTube analytics tells me that only 10% of the people who start the presentation actually make it to the end. So you are one of the select few. You're like the Navy SEAL of pole shift researchers. So this is the epilogue. That was the main presentation. Um, after seeing all this, you might want to learn more or fact check what you have heard. Please understand that the powers that be, the, these people, the elites who own the newspapers, who own the media companies, these really high up guys who have their fingers in the governments and stuff and the banks, they don't really want us all to understand about Nibiru and the pole shift. They don't want us to know and they use their contacts and media and they use their media companies to put out a lot of disinformation. They, they, they don't want people to panic. They, the common folk, we, we're the engine that drives this whole world, right? They want us to keep working at our jobs, to keep paying our mortgages, to keep the whole machine running, to keep the gears moving up until the very end when they can hop off and, and run to their luxury bunkers underground. So as a result, um, they put out a lot of these disinformation articles. Here's one. They're one of the favorite techniques, is, and they do this in the UFO world a lot, is just dismissal and ridicule, right? So here's an article from The Telegraph from 2017. Nibiru. See, it's got the actual name in there. How the nonsense Planet X, Armageddon, and NASA fake news theories spread globally. That sentence, like, grammatically doesn't, doesn't even work. They're just throwing every, like, insult into the headline they can. So when people see it, they'll go, oh, Nibiru, fake, fake news, uh, nonsense, or Planet X theory, conspiracy theory. And they won't, you won't be interested, and you'll, you'll, you'll shun the whole subject. And if it ever comes up, you'll just look away and not not be interested. So, um, all of Nibiru's effects on our planet, all the symptoms, they are given specific cover stories in the media. 
and in the mainstream news. And what are some of the cover stories we have heard? Regarding global warming, they blame everything on global warming. And then what's the, what's causing global warming? Do they ever talk about that? Well, I, I guess carbon or, or greenhouse effect or something, or, or you know, it's, it's humans, right? They, always, they want to blame humans. They make us feel guilty for driving our SUVs and then they, they'll hit us with carbon taxes for it. The earth wobble, as we've seen, scientists can't deny the earth wobble. People see the sun rise and sunset in different places every night. So they have to put out cover stories. And we saw a slide of these cover stories. They call it, they blame it on droughts or earthquakes or fossil fuels or ice sheets or, or global warming. All the increase in earthquakes, they, they basically don't report on it or they just blame it on fracking. Uh, the animal die-offs, those are really big in the news. Now they just kind of, they downplay it in the news. They'll blame it on bacteria or some mystery virus or they'll blame global warming again. The second sun sightings. The, the, this is interesting because, you know, how do you explain away a second sun in the in the sky? They, so far, the only excuse they've given is they've called it a trick of the light when it appeared over London in October 2017. They just called it a trick of the light. So, you know, that might be enough for some people. But um, I'm guessing they'll say that it's Mars or Venus in the Guy or that it's a satellite or it's the moon or that you know they're, they're gonna get they'll make up some some other story so 2017 was a huge year for for volcanic eruptions uh, for whatever reason the way the tectonic plates were shifting it just gave us a lot of there was a lot of movement that year and pe people were were noticing the, a lot of these big eruptions made the news and so you know, as part of the cover-up, what do they do? They put out an article that says, scientists say rash of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions on Ring of Fire, not connected. Oh, don't worry, guys. The, the nice men in the white lab coats are, are reassuring us that there's nothing to see here, nothing to worry about. We can just go back to sleep, go back to our jobs, go back to binging Netflix or whatever. Here, here, here's what, what erupted in 2017. Mount Etna in Italy, Mount Kambalni for the first time in 250 years on the Kamchatka Peninsula, Mount Bogoslav in the Aleutians, Mount Egong in Indonesia, Mount Stromboli in Italy, Mount Mayon in the Philippines, Mount Sinabung also in the Philippines, Mount Shinbadake in Japan, Mount Io also in Japan for the first time in 250 years erupted. In Vanuatu they had a forced evacuation of one of their islands due to an eruption. Hawaii's Kilauea, remember that? Lots of beautiful visuals from that one. Started spewing lava and destroying neighborhoods and had lava flowing to the ocean. Mount Merapi in Indonesia and finally the Volcan de Fuego in Guatemala. Huge eruption. So all of that in the space of 14 months. But nothing to see here. They're not connected, say scientists. Another classic fake news headline. The weird way that climate change could make earthquakes worse. So you get it? <laughs> if, you see that headline and people, they want people to think the next time there, there seem to be a lot of earthquakes in the news, they'll go, oh, it must be that pesky climate change that's causing it. And so they, they already have an answer in, in, in mind for, for anybody who might start to wake up and get curious. I love this one. I think this article is from Slate. It says, the long read, why Silicon Valley billionaires are prepping for the apocalypse in New Zealand. And it, this is from 2018. It goes on to, to say... Um, you know, maybe it's their obsession with libertarianism or uh, J.R.R. Tolkien. You know, they want to, they want they, they're moving to New Zealand to go tour the the movie sets for the Lord of the Rings films that Peter Jackson did. Yeah, that's what it is. And then even later, it um, it admits that some of them are buying farms and sheep stations pretty far inland. You know, so they can hire up in the in the mountains so they can avoid the the flooding that occurs during the pole shift. See these these Silicon Valley billionaires quote unquote, quote unquote they, they know what's going on. Another trick they use is to trot out a fake prediction in the news and they give it a lot of coverage such as this well publicized one from the summer of 2017. An author claimed that a planet named Nibiru would collide with planet Earth on exactly September 23rd, 2017. They gave an, this guy gave an exact date, and the, all, all the news outlets latched onto this and blasted it across the, the media. And this was all based on a few vague, vague passages from the Bible, according to the author. So, of course, when that didn't happen in September 23rd, 2017, nothing happened. All the people who paid attention to this hoax 
they now believe whenever they hear the word Nibiru that it's all nonsense. You see how that works? It's called false prophecy. It's a, it's a, a technique that intelligence agencies have used, and they did it with the Nibiru thing as well. Not the first time, either. This brings us to our last cover-up example, and from Newsweek again, it says, Earth's magnetic poles show signs they're about to flip, exposing humans to radiation and planet-wide blackouts. This is from 2018. So, you know, a big, a big gloom and doom push from the mainstream media centered on this supposed pole flip thing. Notice how they say pole flip, not pole shit. So they really pushed this hard. They, they were trying to confuse people about the term pole shit, confusing it with pole flip. And um, to this day, they have pushed this so hard online and in the mainstream that um, even regular folk, friends of mine that have no, know nothing about science, they have heard of the pole flip. And if I ever mention the pole shift, they say, oh, is, that, is that the pole flip thing you're talking about? And the premise of the pole flip, if I can debunk it really quick, is that the Earth's magnetic north and south poles flip suddenly within a few hours or a few days or something. And that causes all kinds of chaos with the Earth's magnetic field and radiation and stuff. There's no evidence of this, none. And it, it really couldn't happen because the Earth's magnetic field is aligned with the sun's magnetic field. They're two big magnets out in space. So if the earth suddenly flipped its magnetic field, the only reason it would do that is if the sun suddenly flipped its magnetic field. There's no evidence that that's ever happened either. What they're seeing though in the um, in, in the, the, the stones and the, the dried lava, the, the cooled lava from tens and hundreds of thousands of years ago is that the little uh, poles of the, of the iron atoms don't always line up with the existing current north and south magnetic poles of Earth. So they know that in the past, the magnetic poles of Earth have been in different locations. And that's, that's due to the pole shift, right? The, these pole shifts that happen every 3,600 years. So they take this and they spin this big doom and gloom hoax about a pole flip. And then they just push it in the media articles and articles and YouTube videos and science specials and stuff. And pretty soon everybody is all worried and spun up about some imaginary non-existent pole flip and you come along with information on a pole shift and they go oh yeah i already, already heard about that yeah they talk about that in the news and you go oh no 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 this is different so just another technique to muddy the waters to confuse the common folk i call it haystacking you know it's like looking for a needle in a haystack now to find any any uh, truth about the matter if like me you live in southern california um here is a 600 foot flood map of southern california so all the large, heavily populated coastal communities uh, during and after the pole shift will be underwater. So make your real estate decisions accordingly. That said, don't tell the guy who's going to buy the <laughs> buy my house when I put it on the market in the next couple of years, because I need somebody <laughs> I need somebody to pay me market value so I can get out of Dodge. If you know what I'm saying. The end. Wow, if you made it this far, you are one in a million, my friend. Please understand that at this point, if you're here at the very end, it's because you just left YouTube running in the background and went to do something else, or you actually get it. You're, you're at a level of spiritual maturity where you know something's up, and you know you had a friend or somebody pointed you to this presentation, you found it on the Facebook group, and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, this is, I think this is real, this might be real, yeah, I think this resonates with me, yeah, so good for you. Understand that um, when you have family and friends who, who don't know about Nibiru or the pole shift, you can't really convince them, you can't. You can show them all the evidence in the world, that we didn't even touch on most of the scientific evidence you have. Look at the Schumann residence, resonance. Do a little research into the Schumann resonance and see what it's been up to in these last few years. And that's all caused by Nibiru and its magnetic field. And um, you'll see <laughs> you'll, you'll see how, how serious this is and how, how far flung the effects are. Um, but just know that um, I, I put this out there sort of as, a, as an act of goodwill and also for... Uh, following what's it called the golden rule the golden rule right do unto others as you would have them do unto you for me if i did if i knew nothing about the pole shift i would like somebody to have a clear concise 
well written, although I don't know how well written this was, presentation that explained it all to help to help me understand and come to terms with it and get up to speed. And so for that reason, I'm putting it out there for others. That said, I don't expect my presentation to persuade anybody. But at the same time, it's a nice way to, it's a nice way to have plausible deniability for people who don't get it. And at the very end are saying, hey, you know, the, the tides are going crazy and, and the earthquake just destroyed my, my city. And why didn't anybody warn me this was coming? You could say, hey, I tried to warn you. You know, here's a presentation, explains it all. If you didn't want to watch it or if you, don't, if you can't believe it or are in denial, that's on you. You know, at least, at least we did our part to try to bring awareness. And uh, that's, that's the best we can do. After that, we just we got to prepare for us and our, our loved ones. All right, so God bless you all. Best wishes, best luck. Kent Crandall out.